Hello friends, this is Neetu Jain. Today in this video we are going to talk about transaction analysis. Transaction analysis is a theory of personality wherein social transactions are analyzed to determine the ego state of the communicator as a basis for understanding behavior. Transaction analysis describes how people are structured psychologically and it helps explain how people function and express their personality in their behavior. Eric Byrne developed the concept and paradigm of transaction analysis in 1950s. His first book on transaction analysis was published in 1961 titled Transaction Analysis in Psychotherapy. Transaction analysis is a model for understanding oneself and others better and for communicating more effectively. The objective of transaction analysis is to provide better understanding of how people relate to one another so that they can develop improved communication and healthy human relationships. Every human personality has three ego states. Ego states are a coherent system of feelings and behavioral patterns. A person manifests his or her behavior through a mixture of thoughts, feelings and behaviors. According to Eric Byrne, a person interacts with three ego states that is parent ego state, adult ego state and child ego state. These ego states are largely shaped through our childhood experiences. Unhealthy childhood experiences can lead to dysfunctional behaviors. A parent ego state is of two types, nurturing parent and critical parent. Child ego state is of three types, free or natural child, compliant child and rebellious child. Each ego state has both positive and negative features. We can detect the ego state that is in control by carefully observing the person's tone, posture, gesture, facial expressions and words he is speaking. So now let us see what is parent ego state. Parent ego state is a state in which people behave, feel and think in response to an unconscious mimicking of how their parents acted or how they interpreted their parents' actions. For example, a person may shout at someone out of frustration because they learned from an influential figure in childhood the lesson that this seemed to be a way of relating that worked. In simple words, in parent ego state, a person behaves as his parents did. Behavior may be more value laden, nurturing, critical, instructive, mature, overprotective and judgmental. Physical clues which indicate parent ego state are nodding, frowning, patting on the head, etc. And the oral clues are use of words such as always, don't do that, never do that, don't worry, things would be alright. Nurturing parent is one who is supportive, understanding, providing emotional security, does not allow risk taking. And critical parent is one which is overbearing, strict, judgmental, not providing any kind of emotional support, critical, instructive, etc. Next one, the adult ego state. Adult ego state is one in which a person deals objectively with the reality, gathering facts, analyzing them and then deciding behavioral pattern. Behavior may be more reasonable, rational, logical and unemotional. Some of the physical clues pertaining to adult ego state are attentive look and not a blank look and oral clues are words such as where, how, when, who, how much, what. In child ego state, a person behaves as he did when he was in his childhood. It is a state in which people behave, feel and think similarly to how they did in childhood. For example, a person who receives a poor evaluation at work may respond by crying as when scolded as a child. Conversely, a person who receives a good evaluation may respond with a broad smile and joyful gesture of thanks. In simple words, behavior pattern in child ego state would be spontaneous, dependent, creative, emotional, impulsive, excitement, energetic and rebellious. Physical clues which indicate child ego state are tears, laughter, hand raising for permission to speak, giggling, nail biting, etc. Oral clues are use of words such as I wish, I want, I don't care, gee, I can't do it, don't want to do it. So child ego states can be natural or free child, compliant child and rebellious child. 
the behavioral pattern indicated by natural or free child are sensuous, impulsive, affectionate, doing things that come naturally, being curious, adventurous, experimental and free spirited. Adaptive child is one who is trained and instructed by parents to behave in a manner taught by them. So such type of people tend to adapt to the situation easily. Rebellious child is one who is not allowed to open up and experiences anger, fear, frustration and such type of people may be rigid in their approach. So a person with healthy personality maintains balance between all the three ego states. A person who has a nurturing parent, matured adult and happy child ego state has healthy personality. But in real life, people are generally dominated by critical parent, destructive child or rebellious child and not so matured adult. People interact with each other from these ego states that is parent, child or adult ego state and Eric Byrne called these interactions as social transactions. Depending upon the kind of ego state involved, these interactions are of three types. Number one, complementary, number two, crossed and number three, ulterior transactions. Transaction analysis helps in understanding these transactions and responding to them appropriately. Now let us see the complementary transactions. A transaction is said to be complementary when the person sending the message gets the predicted response from the other person. Thus the stimulus and response patterns from one ego state to another are parallel. So let us see the example of complementary transaction. For example, if a person asks, what is the time? It is a message from adult to adult ego state and the responder answers, it's about 2 o'clock. So it's a complementary transaction because the lines of transaction are parallel to each other. They are not crossing each other. Another example is a person asks, do you know where the dictionary is? The responder says it's lying on the table upstairs. It is again an example of parallel transaction or complementary transaction. Another example is from a child to parent ego state. If a person says with a worried look, my child has fallen just now, he seriously injured, I want to go home. And the responder says, who is the boss of the person, don't worry, everything would be fine, you go home and take care of your child. So again in this transaction we can see the lines of communication are parallel to each other. So it's an example of complementary transaction. Next is non-complementary or cross transaction. A transaction is said to be non-complementary or crossed when a person sending the message does not get the predicted response or the stimulus and response lines are not parallel, they are crossing each other. For example, we can see in this slide, the sender asks, what is the time? He is asking from adult to adult ego state, while the responder responds from parent to child ego state. He says, why don't you see it from your own watch? So lines of transaction are crossing each other, it's an example of cross transaction. Another example is as we can see in this slide, a person again asks, where is the dictionary? It is a message from adult to adult ego state. And the responder answers from parent to child ego state wherein he says, it's just where you left it, can't you remember anything? So lines of transactions are crossing again. So it's an example of cross transaction. Next one are ulterior transactions. These are more complex transactions and have a hidden agenda. They cause much damage to interpersonal relationships because they have double meaning. Ulterior transactions involve at least two ego states on the part of first person. The individual may say one thing but means something quite different. Now let us see the example of ulterior transaction. If a lady asks from a salesperson, how much does this sari cost? The salesperson answers, this is a very expensive sari exclusively meant for special tastes. He meant that this is a sari which you cannot afford because you do not have a special taste. So the transaction has double meaning, which is why it will block further transactions. According to Eric Byrne, we need to have more of a complementary transaction in order to facilitate good interpersonal relationships. And we need to stop cross transaction because it blocks the communication between two people. Now finally, let us see the implications of transaction analysis or its significance. It helps in improving communication and helps in dealing with conflicts. It reduces stress among people 
as interpersonal relationships and communication among them improves. It also develops positive thinking in individuals. It also provides an easy way to understand who says what and why people act and interact the way they do. With this, we have come towards the end of our session. Thank you everyone for listening patiently to this video.